So organized crime really started in Tampa. Um, it started in Ybor City and some of the local communities with street level kind of crime, but what really gave organized crime its boost in Tampa, very similar to how it started in a lot of the rest of the United States, what kind of really pushed it to that next level was prohibition. And once prohibition started, once the Volstead Act was, was enacted, um, Tampa became one of the larger points of entry for illegal booze into the United States. You have to remember, you have the Cuban community here with the close ties to Cuba. You have a very large natural protected harbor in Tampa Bay. Uh, and you have this, this community here, um, you know, predominantly, especially in Ybor City, Cuban, Spanish from Spain, Italians. You know, drinking wine with dinner from a cultural standpoint was not seen as a very big deal. So um, you, you pretty soon had not only a thriving people just kind of making a little stuff for their own in their basement, but it sort of began to lead to larger bootlegging operations and was really predominantly in this area, rum that was being brought up from the Caribbean and Cuba, as well as corn sugar, molasses, some of the raw materials for distillery operations here. Uh, now along with a lot of that cargo, along with a lot of the booze that was being brought in, um, there were a couple other commodities during this uh, prohibition era that, that really started coming into Tampa. Number one was narcotics. And Tampa became, by the mid-1920s, second only to New York City as the largest port of entry for illegal narcotics. And you had a couple major narcotics operations that were uh, organized here in Tampa that distributed narcotics up and down uh, not only the East Coast, but really especially through the Midwest. Um, the other commodity were people, uh, specifically Chinese immigrants that were being smuggled into the United States through Cuba and through Tampa. And there's a lot of great... Um, Coast Guard uh, primary sources and, uh, and stories I, I read about Coast Guard cutters intercepting these smuggling ships off the coast of Tampa, off the coast of Tarpon Springs, the Gulf beaches. So it, it was really a little lawless there for a while. So the other racket that really made organized crime a lot of money, and, and, and the thing that really enabled organized crime to gain a bigger foothold in terms of having money to corrupt politicians and, and getting viewed as purveyors of more victimless crime was illegal gambling, specifically a game called Bolita. Um, and there are a couple variations of Bolita. The original, kind of the earliest variation was a, a, um, a Bolita set of 100 balls made out of uh, wood or ivory. They'd be numbered one to 100 and, and people would go watch Bolita being thrown. So you'd, you'd bet a penny or a nickel on a number and they would throw those balls into a cloth sack, shake it up and toss it into a crowd someone would grab it, they would go cut the bag, or whatever number they grabbed, that would be the winning Belita number. Um, you know, they found, the, the guys running the games found ways to kind of rig it a little bit. In fact, there, there's a couple Belita sets still around in Tampa, and one that I saw, um, there was about five or six numbers that were really heavy that they filled with lead, so those numbers would tend to fall to the bottom of the bag and get chosen more. Uh, and then Belita, kind of morphs into more of a general numbers racket. And the, the easiest way to describe it is instead of going to Publix or the supermarket to play your pick three lottery, you would go to your Belita seller. And whether he was the ice cream man or the butcher or some guy in the corner or the guy at the cigar factory taking bets, you would bet a number with him. And depending on who you bet from is how they would get their winning number. Some people took the last couple numbers of the stock market number for the day. Um, there was a very popular game called Cuba that they would take the last two numbers of the Cuban National Lottery, which was drawn every Saturday. That would be the winning Bolita number. So when it really became more of a general numbers, it really took off and everyone played Bolita. And you have to remember in the 20s and 30s, you could bet a penny, nickel, or dime. You can win $50, $100. That was big money back then.